Omelette, written by Srinivas Ayer, presented by C.V. Dasgupta, M.S. Narayan, and Girish Murthy. Omelette, Dramatis Personae. Characters, Arthur Ponderwell, a young lord. Harry Merriwit, his friend. Omnes, a serving man. Act 3, Scene 2. Scene, a chamber in Arthur's manor house. Arthur is uncomfortable, having indulged in food excessively the previous night, and is paying the price. Methinks this wondrous strange, that the goodly supper which only yesternight I did consume with unsating relish, should, by some fantastic quirk of the body's alchemy, be transmuted this morrow from noble victuals to vile turd. Therefore did I repair hastily to yon hallowed commode, there to disburden myself anon of this rank, offensive load. Truly, if to convert gold into pale dross be a peccadillo, then, by the like yardstick, to eat were to be a crime. For is not that life-breathing substance, that rare comestible which coarse churls and untutored infants call food a score more precious than mercenary gold? Grave moral this that I have drawn from my morning ritual. This moment on, cursed be the happy trenchman, and thrice blessed he who starves. Good day to thee, Arthur. Save thy greeting for a happier occasion, Harry. Belike the present time is not meet for it. The day grows most foul, for a most foul sight did greet mine eye ere thou didst. I did mark thy mane, strangely discomposed, and did intend ere long to frame a question to inquire out the cause of thy sudden unease. Now do I seize the moment to ask it. What sight so foul could so work upon thy visage, that it do lack its natural colour, its wonted ruddiness absent, and in its place, like a pale, vaporous contagion, the usurping white of a rotting cadaver? A lumpish, yellow spectacle, Harry. This it is that believes my face of its customed red. Gold, means thou? I know many who are gazing on its luster, have upon an instant fallen into some distemperature, the which takes away the lustre from their cheeks. Nay, the metal is much removed from my drift. This matter did I descry in the box. Perchance thou hast peat in mind? Bog peat, they call it, for tis found in the bogs. And the colour of it is brown, and brown is but cause to yellow, and studying brown, thou didst fall into a brown study. Harry, Harry, thou reasonest with marvellous wit. Yet had I other matter in mind. A matter doth rear a hellish stink. And coming from rear, it doth affront the nostril. There be both rhyme and logic in your wit. Ay, thus, for the four letters of the matter do rhyme with my wit, and my wit most logical because catalogical. Thou hast a merry humour, forsooth. It fitteth not with my present condition, which inclineth towards some philosophy. Do thou still lend me a patient ear? For I have some matter privately to discharge that brooks not delay, but with each growing second puts me to such full pangs that soon must I, as the black rain cloud, in yon welkin. What? Make water. Go to, old my boy, rile me not with thy raillery. Void thy bloodful, prithee, but thy base excrementious act over, step not into my chamber, straight hie thee out my house, 
lest my collar be aroused, and in high dudgeon I do upon thee some bloody injury. To pee or not to pee? That question hast thou answered. The gay gourmand, the wanton hogger, who stuffs his belly with choice viands, his coiled intestines do begin to rebel, and soon is he constipated or gout-stricken, his breath coming in short asthmatic puffs. Or if the maladies do not set upon him at once, he doth sprout a pendulous paunch, and his legs, grown bloated with grub, are thick stumps that walk not but waddle. Thus doth he untimely haste his own end, himself an object of scorn a while he live. Much happier is the god starveling, who feeds on roots and metaphysic, his bowels unpricked by the griping colic, his great toe free of the gouty swell, his breath not wheezy or bronchitic. He sways not like the swag-bellied glutton, but bears himself like an erect elm, even to his late inviting deathbed. But take thee to thine omelette, my lord. Thine appetite, newly wakened by the morn, doth warrant quick dispatch. A pox upon thee, thou dew-lapped devil! Tempts me thou with cates? Knowst thou not that I have forsworn all rich repast, and tempts me thou still? Good, my liege. Avon Sirrah, go get thee out of my sight, ere I break a stick across thy hairless pate, or stop thine aging breath in the nostril, or scramble thee and have thee for an omelette. Thou luckless, lacklustre, lockjot, licksbittle, go to, I say. And now will I to yogurt and yoga.